Brenda Ryder. Y'all make some cow bar noise for Brenda, give it up! Thank you, Caleb. Thank you, Noble Cobb. I'm happy and grateful to be here. Or anywhere. You know, on Earth. So, yeah, alright. Um, here's the poetry. <clears throat> I'm the transformer, transforming inspiration into little pieces of poetry. Nobody even noticed me transforming a brainstorm into the form of a piece. I was forced to release my thoughts to a piece of paper. My modus operandus is totally outlandish. When it comes to the business of passion, my passion is business. I forgot the rest of that one, but do you like it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got like 40 something poems memorized, but I realized recently that like in the last year or two, I just kind of settled to the, into this comfort zone of doing like the same five or six over and over. So I was like, I should get out of that comfort zone and try doing the other ones. So that was my attempt at one of the other ones. But uh, if you want to buy a CD, I've got, you know, I don't forget them on there. You can just listen, you can rewind it or whatever. I've got art too for sale. I do visual art as well as uh, poetry. <laughs> so let me do something else. This one is called um, The Peddler. It's really old, but I never forget this one. Because, um, I don't know, it just really resonates with me and, and it might with you too. But uh, I lived in New York for many years. I moved to Florida. I didn't have a car. But my grandfather passed away coincidentally at around the same time and I inherited his car. But then like two weeks later I crashed it. And so I had no car and no money to get one. So I bought a bike for $150 at Walmart. And for the next two years, I rode my bike everywhere to work, to everywhere I had to go, and I just saved up money, and then I eventually you know, bought another car. But when I was riding my bike every day, um, I just noticed that it really like, got my creative juices flowing. Something with the act of pedaling and whatnot got my thoughts flowing. But I couldn't wait till my destination to write down what I was thinking, because I would forget. So I had to learn or I had to teach myself how to write poetry while I was riding my bike. So I did just that and I, you know, it became like a hobby of mine. And uh, this poem is about that and it was written in that fashion. I wrote this poem on my bike going back and forth to work over the course of like two or three days. And uh, so it's called The Peddler because that's what I am. Here it is. I find pleasure in the simple pleasures in life like riding and riding my bike. And sometimes at the same time, best of both worlds when I ride and I write, especially at the same time. You see, I'm a peddler and I used to be a peddler, not a beggar, but a peddler. You see, a peddler has a product to sell and I sold comedy club tickets on the streets of New York City for three years straight. Straight commission, a peddler, a salesman, a peddler, a hustler, a peddler, a promoter, a peddler. I was a peddler in Times Square. I used to pedal in the square, but now I pedal in circles on my bicycle, on my way to going somewhere, riding and riding, way out there. A peddler on the pedals of my bike, pedaling over the rose petals of life. Stop and smell the roses. A peddler in more ways than one. And now the wheels are really turning in more ways than one. And that's what I'm pedaling for, pedaling far, pedaling fast, by far the fastest way to think. It's like mental and physical link into the ink. Living life on a bike is like living life in perpetual motion until I get a flat. Hole in the inner tube, interlude. Switch, change the subject, switch, change gears, switch, change lanes. It all came from a strange brain, marker in my hand, no hands on the brakes, no book in my hand, no hands on the bars. Hands busy reaching for stars, hands busy reaching for Mars. Why should I keep them on the handlebars? You see, this is just a sample of the ample art, life art, bicycle art. I write life on a bicycle, smart. You see, the peddler likes to embark on a pedal-driven mission without driving. Written while I'm riding, I'm driven without driving. How many spokes on a tire? How many thoughts on my mind? How many lines on a page? It's like forward motion taught me that time never stays and so I plan and I pray for the best. I used to write at a desk but I had to find better ways to express because my mind strains when I'm stressed but my mind sprays best when I'm at rest but in motion. Pedal driven devotion. 
Nobody's ever written on a bike like me. Not likely, not likely done. Well, it might have been done, but not like me. See, I'm a free spirit that rides free. I ride hands free. A free spirit, that's what I decided to be. I decided to be me, the peddler. Yeah, good times, great times, man. I love you all. I don't even know you, but I still stand behind that, all right? Does that sound weird? I don't care. I don't really, I don't give a shit. Okay, all right. So um, this is another one. This is really old, but uh, I definitely had this one memorized. This was kind of like the first poem that I ever really wrote, or the first one that I wrote, memorized, and gave it a title and started performing out um, in New York City, which is kind of where I got my start doing open mics up there. And I remember I wrote this poem in like three different parts. It was just three different like rants that I pieced together. And I didn't really know how to memorize a poem at the time. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I was just new teaching myself. So uh, I was like, well, there's gotta be little, little trips, little, little tip, tricks, tips. Well, I had to memorize something like this. So I wrote it all on note cards and I just kind of kept the note cards with me and I would just read it over and over until it, sunk into my brain and that was like 14 years ago so it's still there um, but this one is called broken down it kind of describes how i was feeling at the time and how i got out of it so here we go thoughts written on scrolls and slates with a broken paper mate helped me to relate and escape from my own self-hate spitting vocals on a broken tape i guess to never be heard is my absurd fate you see, success never remains. It's like I'm flying through rain, but with a stain on my gold cape. And no dough translates to no cake. Unique enough to make the mold break. One of a kind like a snowflake. But I run from my problems till my toes ache. Broken mental state, susceptible to the scold of a snake. See, I've succumbed to rummaging for crumbs on an oval plate. There's no escape. Spiteful winds overturn my boat in a cold lake. Emotionless, no trace. Hopeless, ready to fold and break. But hold up, wait. You see, that's why I read over the notes that I take to help me focus on my ascension rate because even though the tension is great, I'm holding the key to a broken gate and in the dark, it's hard to locate. So I switch up the whole pace and I recreate and elevate and I'm like, underdeveloped quotes envelope a host of my thoughts and get lost in a sinking boat, float or sink on the brink of sinking, thinking. Most of my thoughts might get lost in oceans of blue ink, which makes me truly think, why do I fear control? With an uncontrollable, loose grip on my soul, losing my wits, ready to break and fold. They say that wisdom is better than gold, but at 30-something years old, single and bold, am I wise enough yet to know which head is really in control? See, let me break it down. I'm broken, I'm down. I'm focused but forcefully holding a frown. Upside down, worthy of a crown. At the top is a loud sound until we turn it down. Hindsight is 2020. Take off your glasses and turn around. Get off your asses by the masses bound. Give me a hand, nah, give me a pound. Nah, hand me a pound and put it on my shoulders and tell me to walk around because being lost is the talk of the town and gossip is more than a small sound. So stop and take a look around before you drop the book of life on the ground. Deaf ears and a conscious sound mix get mixed up and trapped down. Deep falling, profound thoughts, deep pockets, but rich in thought. So who's broke now? Who's down? Who's broken down? If you don't, a haiku is an ancient form of Japanese poetry. Three lines, the first sentence, and that's it. Two, number one. 